Good morning. I'd like to welcome you for joining with me in this time of, of meditation and thought on the Word of God. Last week you didn't receive a meditation from me because I was at work camp and had absolutely no Wi-Fi, very little cell phone service. But as I was thinking upon this week, I thought I would share with you what last week's scripture was focused on, and that was the familiar parable of the prodigal son. And so I'm going to read that now, and it comes from Luke, the 15th chapter, the 11th through 31st verses. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got all he had, set off for the distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country and who sent him to the field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But rather the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and have never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Sanctify us through your words. Your words are truth, O oh Lord. The parable of the prodigal son is one of love and redemption. It's one of realizing a lot of harsh realities of life. There's a lot of things that it says. And you have the the prodigal son, and that word itself means um, wasteful. Um, so you have this young man who is very wasteful with what he's given. In fact, some commentators on this have said that he was really quite brash and insulting to his father to begin with when he asked for his inheritance uh, that early without waiting for the proper time. And so he goes off, and he enjoys life. He lives frivolously, not thinking about tomorrow. And then the time of famine comes, and he is starving in this foreign country, and he realizes for a moment how good he had it back home. 
In fact, in that moment, he realized even the hired help in his father's house had more than what he had at that moment. That they never went to bed hungry. They had food to spare. And so it made him realize that he was better to go back and even with a repentant heart and tell his father that he was no longer worthy to be called his son, but to just be one of the hired hands. And then it says that a long ways off, his father sees him. He kisses him. He welcomes him back. He kills the fatted calf. He brings the best robe, a good pair of sandals, and puts a ring upon the finger of his son. Then we get to the older brother who is angry. And maybe some of us at least can understand that anger because he has been faithful. He has always followed what the father would have him do. And then maybe he was resentful whenever his uh, brother left. I think often with sermons and meditations on this scripture, we sometimes forget the older brother. We tend to talk about the forgiveness of the father and use that imagery to compare it with God, which is a powerful thing. And we see God's love in the same love that the father shows. But maybe like the elder brother, we tend to fall into this path of thinking that that we can earn salvation, that we are faithful and deserve what we get. You know, maybe we start to even equate that our salvation is something that we have earned through our hard work or our good works and not the gift that it, it truly is from the Father. But I can understand and I can resonate with this anger that he has. And so the father comes to talk to him and he vents, if you will, to the father because he says, you know, here, I've been there all of this time. You haven't even given me a young goat to celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours, and I think that that's very interesting language here because uh, that's something that uh, parents often do if they're upset with a child or something, it seems like they talk about to the other parent, this son or this daughter of yours. However, in this latter part of the text, the father then turns it around. He explains that everything he has will be the older brothers and belongs to him. However, the, that the younger brother was dead and is now found again he has found this new life, and it's very much like someone who, who turns away from God, who tries everything else in the world to fill that God-shaped blank, and then comes back into the fold. You know, there is joy in that. And the father actually says, doesn't say this son of mine, but rather this brother of yours. He very strongly reminds that not only is this fella a son, but he is a brother, and that there is a more of a depth than maybe they want to admit. But it's a story in a text that is, is full of family drama, but it's also full of God's goodness and God's love for us. And we unpack that this week in many different levels. We take it a few verses each and every day. And so we studied this text in and out. And, you know, it was such a powerful thing for me to really get into the Word like we did last week. And my encouragement for you guys today is to continue to remain faithful to God, but understand that God still wants the lost to be found. And I think maybe just a little bit in the depths of our hearts that those of us who are part of the established church maybe kind of think of ourselves as the older brother. 
you know, here we are doing God's work and business. And, you know, we haven't even been offered maybe a young goat. And why should we rejoice so in the salvation of another? But yet the salvation of others is what this is all about. And anything that we can do, great or small, to reach people is so important. You know, ministry is not about the big things, but it is about the little things, making a place for people to be comfortable and to be able to enjoy life and feel safe. And so as we go forth this day, let's remember this parable and remember what God has done for us. And we're blessed to be the Father's Son. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the blessings of this day. Help us to grow stronger with you, to live for you always. In your name we pray. Amen.